Mike's Daily Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. F F episode 1320. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont. Today, I am going to talk to you about some interesting things. Are we going to talk about planes and people getting thrown off of planes? I don't know. And uh, the F F episode features. Mike's. Daily Podcast. Matthew's News. Some interesting news items going on. And we'll hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player and the brewmaster. Mike's Daily Podcast. I would like to sing to you about a place called Safeway. It's a supermarket that we have to go and see. Save. There, I was able to sing that song really quickly. I had all the song lyrics Mike's Daily Podcast. in my head. So I went to Safeway and I bought something and they go, hey, you want to play our Monopoly game? Mike's And I said, sure. Daily all kinds of prizes podcast. you can win. So they give me this. Yeah. It's not like a little piece of paper. It's this thing that folds out and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger big old thing board game and you're playing monopoly i mean it's like bigger than a freaking road map back in the days when we had road maps you'd stop by the triple a and get a road map now you freaking don't need it look who just walked in hi mike it's bernita the rodeo queen how y'all doing and to this grunt fiddle player tell you what what yeah There's a little electronic device that's inside your brain that tells you where places are. It's called being a man. Never asking for directions, tell you what. What? Very true, man. That's right. What? Look who else just walked in. Hello, Mike. I'm a terrible. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, I have some delicious river. Thank you. Yes, you mentioned Harry Truman. That's true, because there's a famous story about him ah, going somewhere, Harry Truman. And he was he was driving somewhere with his wife, and his wife told him to get directions, stop and ask for directions, because they were lost. And he gets out of the car, and the guy said something to him like, Hey, you know you look like Harry Truman? And Harry Truman goes, Yeah, I get that all the time. And the, the guy was like, That must suck. But you know, history... It repeats itself because, well, it has a bad memory. And here's today's podcast picture. Very forgetful memory. If we are doomed to repeat the past because we can't remember the future. Wait. The podcast picture today is of me from yesterday. This is a very timely picture. The picture before was from several years ago. This one was from yesterday. And I was over on a hill on a bluff. You called my bluff overlooking Lake Chabot. And it looked like it was about to rain, but it didn't. And we still got this rainy sort of looking weather all the time here at the Bay Area. But I love Lake Chabot and I love walking my dog around there. And it's so green right now. And Basil the Boxer and I will walk there. Oh, there's... He was trying to bark at some cows, but I told him stop it. The cows don't appreciate that. Not at all. Did you just whip the cow? Sorry, Mike. I do it out of habit. That's not nice. I'm the disgruntled fiddle player. That's why I do it. Tell you what. What? Go on with your Monopoly story. Oh, I was monopolizing the conversation with my Monopoly story. Yeah. I work on the weekend, and I have a little bit of downtime where I'm waiting for people to call in because it's a radio thing. And Well, I'm sitting there, and I go, I'll pull out this Monopoly game board, and it takes up the whole freaking room, the whole studio I'm in. And I have a couple of playing pieces. So each playing piece, they they give you a little packet when you go. And I got three packets. So I open up the packet. There's like five tickets in there. I go, okay, maybe I'll win this thing today. And I pull off the little tickets and you're supposed to lick the back of them and stick them onto this game board. Well, it says lick the adhesive part. So I lick the adhesive part. I put it on the game board 
And I did this, I, did, I put all, of, like, 15 of these little tickets on the game board. And I go to move the game board, and all the tickets fall off. They all fall off. They're all on the ground. And I've just licked, and trying to find where each ticket goes, because this is a huge game board with so much crammed into it, takes forever. So I said, screw it. I crumpled up the whole thing and threw it away. That was my visual aid. I mean, audio aid. And I chucked it. And it was done. Done, done. No more Safeway, your stupid game. Anyway, check out the wonderful website, mikesdailypodcast.com, which has all the past podcast pictures and interviews and whatnot. Find that now at mikesdailypodcast.com. You can help out the show through the Amazon link. Click on that. Buy whatever it is you're going to buy, and that makes the world a happy place. And there's the PayPal. You click on that and support the show. Become an inglorious Mike Staley podcaster. Finally, we have this wonderful segment called Matthew's News. Matthew's News. Yeah. You ready, Mike? Just to be clear, this isn't my news. Like, I didn't just come up with this. It was investigated by people other than me. Like Dave Nemitz of TV Line, who wrote this sad thing. Unfortunately, David Letterman's mom died. Now, I bring that up only because I used to watch Late Show and the David Letterman, what was the show before it? The Late Night, Late Show, Late Night, whatever, all his late shows did. And he used, she used to pop up on the show and talk, and she just had this great personality. And it made you just want to go over and hug your mom. Wasn't it hug your sibling day or hug your dog day or something? It's one of those days today. And I'm an only child, but I do have a dog. So I will hug you, Basil the Boxer. Come here. Let me hug you. You're welcome. You slobbered all over my shirt. And I love it. Uh, Dorothy Mingring was David's mom. And she died at the age of 95. That's a pretty darn good life right there and she was a tv star late night tv star she passed away yesterday often called into letterman's nbc show as dave's mom but she made her first on-camera splash back in 1994 she was the correspondent that's what i remember that's what i remember watching late shows correspondent to the winter olympics in lilyhammer her tv visits with her correspondent uh, to to the Winter Olympics. Her, oh, her her uh, visits with her son were so popular. She interviewed Nancy Kerrigan, Hillary Clinton. That was during the Lilyhammer stint, and they were awesome interviews. So much fun. She just had this total Midwest laid back attitude. She returned to the show as a correspondent for the following two Winter Olympics in Nagano and Salt Lake City. She was a retired church secretary and a seasoned pie maker. She published a cookbook in 1996, Home Cooking with Dave's Mom. It contained recipes for several varieties of pie. Stephen Colbert offered his condolences on Twitter. He is the current Late Show host. Then, let's jump to, well, I need to get to the disturbing part. This is the disturbing part of the show, and that is from the International Business Times. That apparently, according to them, concentration camps for LGBT people have been allegedly opened up in Chechnya, where men have been tortured and killed because of their sexuality. The allegations came after a few eyewitnesses and survivors said in interviews with the Russian publication that they were arrested and detained at one of the secret prisons in Argon a town in the Chechen Republic, Russia. Around 100 gay men have been reportedly detained and at least three killed in the past week in Chechnya by the police. The concentration camps are being forced, are used to force homosexuals to commit that they would leave the Republic, it says here. The officials in Chechnya started torturing after a Russian-based NGO for LGBT rights, GayRussia.ru, applied for a gay rights march in the capital of Grozny. Meanwhile, Chechen's President Ramzan Kadyrov, 
who is a key ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin, has been accused of setting up the camps to torture gay people. He has denied the allegation. He said it's impossible to persecute those who are not in the republic, he said. The Chechen government suggested that there are no gay people in the country. Oh, it's messed up over there. Now, to someone... Well, to some place a little closer to home. This is also disturbing. This is about the Hawaiian island of Maui. And this is according to Tech Insider. A sharp rise in infection stemming from a parasitic worm that invades the human brain. Has health officials on Maui worried. Six cases of rat lungworm disease have so far been confirmed in Maui in the last three months with more episodes currently being investigated, given the island had only experienced two documented cases of rat lungworm in the dec- in this decade before this outbreak, the sudden increase is causing concern. Rat lungworm disease is caused by the parasitic roundworm called Angiostrongulus cantonesis, with the adult form of the parasite found only in rats. The infection is spread when rats carrying the parasite excrete the larvae of the roundworm in their feces. From there, it can be picked up by other animals, such as snails, slugs, freshwater shrimp, crabs, and frogs. If people handle or consume any of these infected animals or come into contact with them on contaminated food sources, such as raw fruit and vegetables, they too can become infected. There are no symptoms. Some cases, the worm moves into the brain and nervous systems, resulting in a parasitic form of meningitis that can cause intense headaches, tremors, numbness, even fever symptoms. That can turn out to be fatal. Uh, According to officials, let's see, uh, prevent... Infection, they say, by properly washing all produce, regardless of where they buy it from, said the Hannah, executive director of Hannah Health. Uh, so everybody's got to watch, wash stuff and watch stuff. Don't eat snails or slugs. I didn't know that was a thing, but um, the sooner they can put an end to the spread of this. Life destroying infection, the better, they said. All right, here's some happy news Bill O'Reilly has announced that he's taking a vacation. He announced last night O'Reilly's decision to go off air in the midst of a sexual harassment scandal and advertiser boycott. Haha, <laughs> yay, yay. Arguably has the appearance of a suspension, but O'Reilly worked to dispel that notion with. Him staring into the camera and words being printed next to him to basically distract the listener and watcher of the show and underline points that he's trying to make, his uh, talking points. He announced that he'd scheduled his trip last fall. Well, before the New York Times reported, he paid $13 million to settle harassment claims. Apparently, he'll return August 24th. There's talk inside Fox News that the show could be his last, the one that aired last night. Lawyers for the law firm Paul Weiss hired last summer by 21st Century Fox to investigate Roger Ailes are currently doing a deep dive investigation into O'Reilly's behavior. They're focused now on sexual harassment claims by O'Reilly's guest Wendy Walsh after she reported her claims via the company's anonymous hotline. Fox News co-president Bill Shine has been working hard to keep O'Reilly's sources said, but O'Reilly fu- O'Reilly's future is in the hands of the Murdochs. It's up to the family, apparently. And uh, a little bit more good news is Governor Chris Christie. This isn't good news if you're in New Jersey, but he apparently is the most unpopular governor in the U.S., a new poll finds. 71% of New Jersey votes disapprove of Christie, while just 25% approve This is according to The Morning Consult. Christie edged out Kansas Governor Sam Brownback as the nation's least popular. Brownback had a 66% disapproval to 27% approval. Christie's numbers decreased after he dropped out of last year's GOP presidential primary and became a surrogate for Donald Trump. 
And finally, Walmart is going to pay you. Yes, they want you to come into the store instead of buying stuff online. They're giving customers a discount on 10,000 online only items if they pick them up in store. By the end of June, the service will be rolled out across more than 1 million items. And all those items, when you buy them from Walmart, when you take them home, they immediately explode, melt, break, become completely unuseful. That's the, what I'm reading between the lines, anyway, of this article. That I found on CNBC, price cuts will vary depending on the product size, cost, and category. Last mile delivery refers to the final step of, of the shipping process before it arrives on the customer's doorstep. And I guess these discounts are the equivalent to what last mile delivery costs are. It is the most expensive aspect of filling online orders, sometimes exceeding 50% of an item's total delivery cost. The retailer will use the technology pioneered by Jet.com, the website Lore founded. That would be uh, the Mark Lore, president and Walmart U.S. e-commerce. And sold to Walmart late last year to calculate the savings. Edible items will be noted on the company's website and will not include third-party products sold on the marketplace. Orders will be filled within two days. Um, that was... But the uh, Walmart shoppers will snag a bigger discount on inexpensive but heavy items, which are costlier to ship than small products that carry a high price tag. I have at my work this uh, thing. It's called Vitality, Power of Vitality. And if you sign up and get like a special card from them, you can use it to buy stuff at Walmart and then you get points that you can redeem later. And also it helps bring your health care costs down. So Walmart's trying to get their hands in a bunch of things to get people to come back to them. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley because Amazon is so big. I am going to end the show now, but next show will be Madame Rutabaga Valentino and Bison Bentley. A big thank you and shout out to Haley, who listened all the way to the end of the show. In fact, we should probably do this little thing. The Daily Haley. Almost Haley, Haley. And Haley said to me, Mike, you mentioned there were a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Is there something going on? And I said, oh, yeah. And we ended up having a discussion with other people at work about the issues that are plaguing me. And so I think some of it has been given. Um, I've aired some of my grievances. But we shall see. It's just not cool when... You have your job, and then someone takes their job and puts it on you, which they should be doing. Right? Am I right? Am I wrong? Oh, okay, thanks. Oh, and as for this whole plane debacle with United, I, I hate United. I had so many points from United. I just had them redeemed for the magazine for miles thing. This was a couple of years ago. I had magazine subscriptions that lasted forever from all these different magazines. But the point being, if you get bumped from a plane, you have so many rights. You're supposed to get all this money. I, I don't have, I have this article in front of me right here from one mile at a time dot boarding area dot com. But I mean, stuff like you're supposed to get $1,350 for certain things if you're bumped and you're supposed to get more money for if you're baggage your check baggage is still on the flight so check it all out do a google search a bing search figure it out and and make sure that if this sort of thing happens to you a you get all over the media all over the news like that guy did that got bumped from united and find out what your rights are i would tell you what they are but it's the end of the show Ooh, and transportation.gov. That's probably the best website. Transportation.gov slash air consumer slash fly hyphen rights. Well, you know, it's transportation.com. Look it up and you can get all that info. Mike's TV podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at Mike's TV podcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.